How's it going, people? Doing all right? Wanted to try something out. My mom made some of her homemade Kahlua. I always thought it was made from rum, but she used vodka. So anyway, this is mom's own brand of Kahlua. And I'm anxious to try it out. Yeah, tastes just like store-bought Kahlua. Actually, a little nicer. Not as not as sweet. More coffee taste. Anyhow, um, ah, yummy. Thought I would share a little literature with you. It's a. Um, Another story track about a gypsy girl. And um, I just found this recently. I found a few. Um, this one grabbed my interest. Um, doesn't seem to be a narrative. Haven't read it yet. Okay. Many years ago, the artist uh, Stenberg stood deep in thought in his Dusseldorf studio. He had just promised to provide a painting of the crucifixion of Christ for a church building. It was to be a masterpiece, and he would be paid a handsome price for his work. Ah, this is yummy. In the weeks that followed, Steinberg uh, searched out all he could find of the facts of the death of Jesus. He probably never heard about it before then. Um, Steinberg was talented. He was famous. He was becoming wealthier every year. But what Steinberg did not have was peace in his soul. <sighs> the first brush stroke of color touched the canvas, then another, and another. Soon the cross stood stark and upright on Calvary Hill. Day after day, Stenberg's brush added detail to the canvas. Sudden fascination. Heading in the next section. Uh, then suddenly... He was tired. I need a rest from this, he told himself. I will walk out to the country and sketch. It was spring, and the forest was turning a fresh green. At the edge of the forest, Stenberg stopped. He saw a gypsy girl weaving a straw basket. Blue-black hair Reach to her waist. Um, her red dress was faded and torn. Her eyes were black, large and restless. What a painting, thought Stenberg. The girl stared up at the artist. Smiling, she dropped her weaving jumping up and raised her hands high above her head and twirled and danced in front of him. Stand still, cried Stenberg. The girl dropped her arms. This week you must come to my studio. I want to paint a picture of you. Oh, senor, the girl said shyly. I am only a poor gypsy girl. That doesn't matter. Come, he said. And she came in her red dress, probably the only one she had, uh, with her hair tucked back with a flower. Uh, Stenberg was ready. Sit, he commanded. Pepita had never been in an artist's studio before. Her questions amused Stenberg, but suddenly her eyes stopped at the painting of the crucifixion. It was almost complete. 
Who is he? That's the heading of the next section. She never heard about Jesus either. When, when, when did this happen? <laughs> Who is it? she asked. The Christ, the artist said indifferently. Oh, the Christ. Eh. He said it indifferently. I didn't do it right. Sorry. Uh, but what are they doing to him? Well, they're going to fly him like a kite. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry. That was an improv there. Um, crucifying him, he answered. But who are those cruel people? Stenberg dropped his brush in frustration. Listen to me, he said. You stand still right there and do not move your lips to speak. Pepita stopped talking, but her eyes never left the crucifixion. After several hours, posing for the day, uh, posing for the day was over. At the door, Pepita stopped. Was he bad? She asked. No, no, very good. Stenberg said. Remember, come back the day after tomorrow. Guess I had to skip the Sabbath or something. Uh, each day that Pepita, uh, uh, each day Pepita came to the studio, she asked another question. If he was good, why did they do it? All right, we're done for today. I'll ask a question tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> um, impatiently, Stenberg said, listen, I will tell you once uh, what I know. Hurriedly, he repeated the facts of Christ's death, and as he talked, he saw her black eyes fill with tears. One day, both paintings were finished, the one of the crucifixion and the Spanish dancing girl. For the last time, Pepita came to the studio, which she saw herself on the canvas. She was delighted. Then she walked over to the other painting and stood silently. She turned to Stenberg. You must love him very much, senor, for he has done all that for you, don't you? Then she was gone. Stenberg watched her as she went down the street. But the street noises refused to drown out the sound of Pepita's voice. Love him very much when he... Love him very much. Yeah, they kind of trail in. Uh, uh, when he has done so much for you. No peace is a heading of the next section. Pretty dramatic shit here. Uh, all week he heard the question. You must love him very much, don't you? His restlessness and turmoil of soul grew. He could stand it no longer. He tried going to church. That'll fix it. At least you'll get catch up on your sleep. <laughs> and the vicar attempted to pacify him with, All will be well. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> But when Stenberg le left, his heart was still tormented. That wasn't good enough. He decided to present his masterpiece to the church at a fraction of its cost. He found the vicar and told him of his decision. The grateful vicar said, For what you have done for this church, God be with you. But even giving such a wonderful gift to the church brought him no peace. Stenberg knew God was not with him. He was still haunted with the question, You must love him very much, don't you? He walked night and day up and down the streets of Dusseldorf, trying to shake off his sadness of spirit. But nothing helped. One night, he watched a group of people hurrying 
into a house curiously. He noticed that the people who entered looked happy. Peace is an exception, so. One evening, to satisfy his curiosity, Stenberg went to the house and sat down with the people. He listened to the speaker, a man who seemed to have found peace that Stenberg was the peace that Stenberg was looking for. That night, Stenberg found the answer for his restless soul of mind. The church could not give peace to his soul, nor his gift to the uh, gift to the church. Jesus had died on the cross for Stenberg, and at last, the artist could say, "And how much he, uh, how much I love him." It was the crucified Christ who gave him peace of his soul, and rest for his mind. And that's only because he didn't find out about Vishnu uh, first, you know. And geography helps. It's a known fact. All right. This is getting good, isn't it? Uh. The next morning, he could not keep his joy to himself. How can I tell others? He asked himself. I can paint, he said with certainty. And soon a great masterpiece was presented to the Dusseldorf Gallery for every visitor to see, a sermon for all to read. One day he found a girl weeping in front of his picture. He turned and it was Pepita. It is you, Signor, she cried out. Oh, Signor, if only he had loved me so much. They both sat in front of the painting, which she told her the morning of his cruel but wonderful death and the glorious resurrection for all men, for gypsies, for everyone. Christ Jesus has... has you... wait... Read the wrong part. All right. Suffered and bled on the cross, and he died. And he did all this for you, Pepita. It's your fault. <laughs> uh. The gypsy girl was quiet. Then she looked up. I believe it, she said simply. I mean, you know, <laughs> Jesus was crucified, and Obama didn't do anything to stop it. Uh, sorry, being a smart ass. Uh, two years later, Pepita died, trusting in Jesus. So it has a happy ending. Her last words were, All this I did for thee. I do everything for me, including help others. I'm still doing it, doing it for me. <laughs> makes the world a little better. It's selfish, believe me. The artist grew older, and finally he had to set his brush aside. Dusseldorf lost his, its artist, but the paintings still hung for all to see. Years later, a young German nobleman wandered into the Dusseldorf gallery it stopped in front of the Stenberg masterpiece. He read the inscription on the frame. All this I did for thee. What hast thou done for me? Later that night, the young nobleman made a decision to give his life to answering the question under the Stenberg painting. That nobleman was Count Zinzendorf. That guy. The gallery burned years later, and with it, the famous canvas. 
That's why they had to have this picture on the cover instead, I guess. Uh. But the question for everyone, for you and me, uh, you, for me, remains the same. All this I did for thee, what hast thou done for me? Because you can, you know, pay one of my earthly representatives. He'll get it to me. <laughs> He'll send it in smoke signals, yeah. Um, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.15 The Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And it stops right there without punctuation. Uh, Galatians 2.20 It's from the Independent Baptist Church stamp there. It's the Bible Truth Publishers. Information will be in the description. And uh, eh, we'll read another one later on. Just trying out the uh, Kahlua, Mom's Kahlua. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And the next video will be a lot better, I'm sure. Bye.